making about inflation and what's called the CPI, which stands for the Consumer Price Index, and it's a way to measure inflation. But we should start by asking, what is inflation? Sort of the everyday way of thinking about inflation is that it seems that the price of many things goes up over time. For example, the price of milk, or the price of gas, or the price of um, a double cheeseburger at McDonald's or something, seems to go up over time. If you go back into your memory bank from when you were young, maybe in the 80s or 90s, you might imagine you remember perhaps a, a gallon of milk costing maybe $2 back in 1990. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Yet nowadays it might cost three fifty or four dollars, and certainly you see gas prices go up and down over time, but generally speaking, go upward. The more official way of thinking about what inflation is is that it's the the buying power of a dollar goes down over time. Your dollar buys less than it used to be able to. Um, for example, your dollar back in the eighties might have been able to buy a gallon of gas, and now a dollar in two thousand thirteen can only buy you know about a third or a fourth of a gallon of gas. So you, the, the dollar has, in a sense, gotten weaker over time. It can buy less. It doesn't have as much power. That's the more official way to think about it. The CPI, the Consumer Price Index, is a way to measure uh, inflation. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at some historical CPIs that I have uh, in a book that I have here and see how they can be used to estimate or measure inflation and how they can be used to solve problems relating to making estimates about prices of things and purchasing power and that kind of thing. Turns out that back in 1975, based on the source that I have, the CPI for the United States was 53.8. And in 2005, the CPI, the average CPI, this is really an average thing, in the United States was 195.3. Okay, what do these numbers mean? Well, basically, um, this is ba these are called index numbers. The CPI is an example of an index number, and it's a way of measuring, rel in this case, relative prices of things. And um, the origin of this CPI is based on some data about prices back in the early 80s. I believe the year range is 1982 to 1984. The average index number during those years was taken to be 100. And based on that, the average prices of things, for example, in 1975, uh, if you could buy a certain amount of goods for about $100, say in 1982, 1983, 1984 or so, probably you could have bought, bought those same set of goods for about $53.80 back in 1975. In 2005, that same set of goods, again, we're not being specific about what these goods are, might have cost you $195.30. So, cost less in 1975, more in 2005. That's because the dollar has gotten weaker over time. As far as making estimates for what things cost in 1975 compared to 2005, we can use these numbers um, to make those estimates. Now, I don't have historical data here in front of me. I was a young boy back in 1975, uh, and I seem to remember a, a gallon of gas sometimes costing perhaps around 40 or 50 or 60 cents back in 1975. Let's just say a gallon of gas cost 50 cents back in 1975. I believe it was around 1975 when the price of a gallon of gas started to spike. Again, I'm not looking at uh, some references to get these exact facts right. I'm going based on memory. It was around the mid-70s when we encountered a, an oil crisis, you might say, because of OPEC in the Middle East. Um, and it was around that time that that price is spiked. But you might have been able to find a gallon of gas maybe in 1973 or 74 for 50 cents a gallon or so. And so the question is, what would the price of gas be in 2005 if, it, if the price rose at about the same rate as the general inflation? That's what the CPI is meant to do, is to help you compare the general price rises in, 
lots of goods compared to, for example, gas or milk or cheese or whatever typical kind of consumer item. Um, and the way you would calculate it here is you would take the ratio of the 2005 CPI to the 1975 CPI. Take that ratio, and if you think about it, without using your calculator, the CPI for 2005 is about four times bigger than the CPI for 1975. A little bit less, maybe three point, I'm just guessing here, 3.7 or 3.8 or 3.9, close to four times. So the gallon of gas in 2005, based on this calculation, should have been about four times bigger than 50 cents, a little less, a little less than two dollars. Okay, so think about this calculation against the ratio of the two CPIs, 195.3 divided by 53.8, that gets multiplied by the price of a gallon of gas in 1975 to get your estimate for the price in 2005 based on the CPI. And that estimate comes out to be $1.82. Is that accurate? Okay, again, I don't have historical data in front of me. Um, it might be accurate. I probably should have had historical, historical data in front of me. Uh, back in 2005, what was the price of a gallon of gas? I think it probably fluctuated a lot. Um, especially, I remember, I'm going on memory here, as we approach 2007, 2008, the price spiked a lot. Uh, the economy seemed to be reaching a state where it was overheating. There was the bubble in the housing market, for example. And I, if memory serves me right, in about mid-2008, it was spiking up near $4 a gallon. Back in 2005, um, it was certainly lower. I'm not sure if I remember how much lower. And so you might want to go and compare it. If you find that the pri actual price, the average price of a gallon of gas back in 2005 was, say, $2 or more, what that would tell you, at least if this was accurate as well, is that the price of gas was going up faster than inflation overall between 1975 and 2005. If it was less than $1.82, maybe $1.50, $1.40, $1.60 even, that would tell you that the price of gas was going up slower than inflation, the general rate of inflation between 1975 and 2005. But again, gas prices are very volatile. They go up and down, as you know, um, a lot over time. And so, you know, you are just, in a sense, taking snapshots of what's going on when you're thinking about this kind of thing. Well, how about a gallon of milk? Okay, so this is 1975, and this is 2005 here. Maybe I should put these down a little further. How about a gallon of milk? This case, this time, let's use the CPI to go backwards. Once again, I don't have actual historical data here. Perhaps a gallon of milk on average in 2005 costs, let's just say, $2.75. We can use the CPI to go backwards in time as well. In the gallon of gas situation, I was pretending that the average price in 1975 was 50 cents, and I used the CPI to go forward in time, took the ratio of this divided by this, and multiplied it by the 1975 price to get my estimate for the 2005 price. You can also do the reverse process to go backwards in time. Take the opposite ratio, the, the reciprocal, is the official name, of the previous ratio, Take the 1975 CPI divided by the 2005 CPI and multiply that by the 2005 price to get your estimate for, in this case, a gallon of milk back in 1975. So this is the reverse process. Since the 2005 CPI divided by the 1975 CPI was in the ballpark of uh, 3.6, 3.7 or so, the ratio 1975 CPI divided by 2005 CPI, 5 CPI is going to be in the ballpark of 1 divided by 3.7 or 3.8 or so. 
Um, if you think about that, that's going to be in the ballpark of point, you know, 0 0.28, 0 0.29, 0 0.3 or so. You can try it with your calculator and see. But if you do this calculation that I have in here, 53.8 divided by 195.3 and then multiply by 2.75, we're going to get our estimate for the price of a gallon of milk back in 1975. And that estimate would be about 76 cents. Once again, was it really that cost back in 1975 or not? I don't know. If it was more than that, say a dollar, then that would be telling you that the uh, price of a gallon of milk has actually been going up slower than the general inflation rate because it would be closer to the current price in 2005. If it was less than 75, 76 cents a gallon back in 1975, like 50 cents a gallon, then the price would be rising over these 30 years from 1975 to 2005 faster than inflation to make up for that difference there. Anyway, that's my introductory video about inflation and the CPI. We'll do more examples and try to model inflation with exponential functions in future videos.